like and subscribe please LaRonda and Jay the date we've all been waiting for the double date with separate people awkward it it was this is a setup this is a complete setup right all that being said the first season of this show I could understand the couples being like what the hell and maybe having a hard time dealing with the premise of the show right but this is the second season so if you come on to put a ring on it you know that the premise of the show is for you to date other people right and my thing with Jay if you're going to have such a visceral reaction if it's going to bug you to the point where you throw up why did you come on this show why now i know you know you could say you never know how you're going to react to things until you're in the situation which i completely understand but on the other side of that you must have had some sort of idea that this was going to be really uncomfortable for you and it's like i said last time it's pretty clear he's a comedian so he does see this maybe as an opportunity to be on television and maybe they get good money from this as well so it's like the opportunity sort of surpasses the uncomfortableness right but i don't know i don't know why you would do this if it's going to affect you that badly and at the beginning i'm still rooting for them but at the beginning i was like oh my god they're so cute what's the problem i'm starting to see what maybe some of the issues are now it's kind of hard to tell whether or not jay is only acting like this because they're on a show like this or does he act like this outside of the show for example like let's say laronda has a coworker a male coworker and let's say she has to go on a business meeting with him or something of that nature does he act like this you know what i mean if laronda wants to go out with her friends you know does he get kind of jealous and suspicious and say well why are you wearing this and da 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 da, da? you know is it the situation or is it a pattern of behavior now that i don't know right because we're only seeing what's being filmed and we're still we're like maybe what this is the fourth episode so actually no this is the third episode so i guess we're going to see how it unfolds right so it's so sweet that laronda was ironing ironing his pants for his date right but he comes in and he's like why is your dress so short you know and it's like one of those people that they present things as jokes but they're not really jokes or um forming thing at forming things as a joke is a way to kind of let out your insecurities right and on one hand i know it's it's what he's feeling in the moment and he should be true to that on another end i for laronda's sake i can see how it can be really annoying like I'm not the only one going on a date. You're going on a date too. We're both going on a date. So why is it that you're so insecure about it? And it's almost like you're nitpicking everything she wears, everything she does. Like for example, Eric, right? The first time that Jessica went on a date, he kind of made a comment about her outfit and you know like, "Oh, that dress is a you know, why is it so short? Why is it so tight?" But This week he it seems it seems like he's learned from the situation. He has gotten more comfortable and instead of being insecure, he compliments Jessica. He's like, "That's a nice outfit. You look good." And I wish the same thing for Jay. I wish he could have just saw Laronda and say, "Hey, you look great." Right? Eventually he did say it, but He should have opened with that. You look great. Wow, you know, I would love to be the guy that you're going on a date uh, with, right? Instead of just always kind of dumping his insecurities on her 
and making her almost feel guilty and bad for a situation that they both signed up for, right? <laughs> and then, of course, LaRonda's date walks up to the door. He's very handsome, and I knew right away that Jay was not going to be happy about this, right? And he wasn't. <sighs> you know, but... Hello, you signed up for this. So they both go on their date, you know, at the same place. And Jay can't focus on his date because the whole time, you know, he's kind of glancing over LaRonda. He's concerned with why they're talking so loud, why she's laughing so loud, you know. And LaRonda's just focused on her, on her date and having a good time. Like, yes, she's aware that Jay is across the room. But she's still able to give her focus on her day. Well, Jay can't do that. And that's like, I mean, I get it. I get it. Because maybe if I was in that situation too, I would be kind of looking over, glancing. But I would be a little bit more low key, right? Because it's kind of rude. You have someone right in front of you and you're basically ignoring them. And Oddly enough, if you had just given more focus to your day and given more energy to that, you probably would feel less secure. You probably would feel less bothered. But because you're so focused over there, it's just building and building and building on that insecurity. And it's too much. It's too much because LaRonda can't really, like she said, she feels like she's walking on eggshells. She can't really relax and give into the process because she always has to be thinking about Jay and whether he can handle it or not. So LaRonda and her date, you know, leave the the area, leave the place, and her date kind of puts her hand, puts his hand on the small of her back, right? And yeah, I mean, uh, I can understand why Jay would be uncomfortable. But I low-key feel like the guy did that to kind of show Jay, like, yo, this is my woman. Even the guy was kind of fresh saying, you know, I'm here to find love. You don't, you never know where you can find love. And even she was like saying, well, you never know what can, ha- what can happen. So it, it was pretty clear that this guy was going to push some boundaries, right? But I feel like part of the reason that the guy is testing Jay in that way because he could see that Jay is insecure. And I feel like he wanted to get under his skin a little bit. But that must have been so awkward for LaRonda because she knows. She knows that Jay is going to bring that up and that could potentially be a fight later on, right? But oh my god, this is so awkward. Okay, so now it's time for Jessica and Eric's date awkward right this this scenario is so awkward but i'm loving it right i'm actually really proud of eric right he was very mature about the situation he handled it very well then again he does have a reputation for being a playboy so he's not sweating this scenario at all even jessica even though she was a little bit bothered or a lot of bit bothered by the end of her date I still think she handled it in at least in the moment as best she could have right because I do understand how this scenario could just be so uncomfortable for you right but Eric he and and this is how if you are in this bizarro (laughs) land scenario the way you kind of handle it is to just focus on your date and be present and just enjoy the moment right if you're so lucky to get someone that you're compatible with, right? Because the more you focus on what your girlfriend or boyfriend is doing, the more uncomfortable you're making yourself, the more you're stressing yourself out, and low-key, you are being rude to your date. So I think Eric played it well, and I think he was fortunate to be matched with who he was matched with because she seemed very bubbly, outgoing and he's bubbly and outgoing so they're able to have good conversation even Jessica and her date you know the funny thing is he's very very handsome right I you know in my personal opinion he's more attractive than Eric right but of course it's not just about looks his personality and blah 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 right but she got a good date 
and it seemed like they were vibing. But then when Eric came into the situation, she lost focus and she couldn't focus on what she had right in front of her, which was a very, very handsome man, right? But she didn't freak out as much as kind of Jay did, right? She was at least sort of able to hold her composure. So I'm going to give her that because I understand it is an awkward situation. But I mean, you guys signed up for it. So Eric comes back from his date, right? And he's telling Jessica about it. And he's saying, wow, I mean, this day was amazing. It was the best conversation I ever had. You know, she really stimulated my mind. Blah, blah, blah. And understandably, Jessica is like, I, uh, I mean, okay, listen, I know the purpose of this process is part of the purpose of this process is to be open and honest with your partner. But I low key agree with Jessica. Like, you're doing too much. You're being too honest. Like, you could just say, it was a really great day. I really enjoyed the conversation. She stimulated my mind. But once you put up the ranking of that was the best conversation I ever had, ouch, like I would be hurt. Like, why do you have to say that? Why can't you just say you had a good conversation? Why does it have to be the best conversation? You know, because you're saying it without saying it, right? You're comparing the date you just been on with your girlfriend right you're basically saying that i have better conversation with her or this one conversation is so much better than any conversation i ever had with you and i feel like based on this one date okay i've connected with her intellectually more than i've connected with you you know and he may not be saying that but once you put a ranking on it you kind of are low-key saying that and I can totally understand why oh that must be so hurtful to Jessica and I think she's trying to take in Dr. Nicole's um, critique right or guidance that she got last week of not trying to shut your partner down when they're expressing their truth right just because it's not something you want to hear because like I said, the purpose of this process is to help you be more honest with your partner. So she's trying to take it in and not kind of explode and have that reaction that maybe she normally would have. But, you know, she's crying and you can tell that she's really hurt by what he said. And he's there. This is the thing. He's standing there like, why are you so upset? What's going on? I mean, maybe not like that. You can tell he's kind of, you know, he. you could tell he's like, oh my gosh, I didn't really mean to hurt you like this, but I want to be honest. But it's like, dude, do you get what you just said to her? You basically said, I've had, based on this one date, I've, I'm having a deeper connection with this woman than you. I mean, you must at least understand the weight of what you just said. It can't just go completely over your head, right? But then Jessica's trying to be cool. But in a weird way, she's not speaking her truth because she's being passive aggressive, right? Where you could tell she's hurt by what he said, but she doesn't want to have the wrong reaction. So this is just a weird situation. And I just feel like you can describe your experience without comparing it to your partner right why can't you just say i had a good time right if he said he had a good time and jessica started crying i would say well you're doing too much because you know what this situation is you signed up for it but you comparing this situation to your relationship and saying it's the best i can understand why that would be difficult to take in and Eric should understand that too. I don't know why it's going over his head. Alexia and Darian. Or Darius. I'm going to say Darian. Ah, you can tell that their relationship is very 
codependent, right? Because like I said, you both of you guys, you sign up off for the show, you know what it is, you know what the concept is, right? You guys date other people, right? So you should not be surprised. I just don't understand why they sign up for this show and then when they see their partner with somebody else, they're so bothered by it. Like, have didn't you emotionally prepare for this situation, right? But if it's true and that's what they're feeling, then hey, that's what we want to see because it's called a reality show for a reason, right? But here's my thing with Darian. It's this double standard because um, the first week's episode, right? I felt that, in my opinion, he crossed the line with Kai, right? He was so... He was disrespectful in my eye, right? Saying, oh my gosh, she's so amazing, she's so this, she's so that. And comparing Alexia to this new woman, Kai, right? I think he was being borderline disrespectful. So when it came to Alexia's date and this whole scenario... I kind of expected Darian to be cool with it or be okay with it, right? Because if you can fix your mouth to be so bold to talk about another woman, that if your girlfriend is on a date, it shouldn't bug you, right? But no, he had a serious issue. He could not focus on his date at all. He was looking at Alexia and what she has going on. Little did he know, he really didn't have anything to worry about. Because the same thing with Alexia. She's over there focusing on Darian and what he's going on. And both are ne- kind of neglecting their dates and the people in front of them. And like I said before, if you just focus on who you are going on a date with, this situation gets infinitely less awkward. But the more you focus on each other, the more awkward it becomes. And low-key, none of you guys had anything to be worried about, right? Well, I take that back. I do think Alexia definitely has something to be worried about, right? With Kai, I don't like the way that Kai is moving. I will say this, at the end of the day, it is Darian's responsibility, right? To keep that boundary. Because he's the one that's in a relationship with Alexia, not Kai. But Kai is rubbing me the wrong way when she says, I don't want to be the side chick. It's either all about me or nothing at all. And in the real world, I get that, right? That makes sense. But yet again, you know what you're getting yourself into. You're dating somebody that's in a relationship, right? So you kind of are, by default, the side chick. What did you come into this situation expecting, right? Like if I were to sign up for the show, as somebody that the couples date, I would go into the situation not really expecting much, right? I would be like, okay, it is what it is. You know, I'm just having a good time. I'm just here to collect my check and move on. But it's like this Kai girl expects herself to be chosen by the end of this. And it's not like you've been dating this person for three months or a while. This has been your second date. You barely know this person, yet you want to claim him. That doesn't make any sense to me. So she just seems like she's trying way too hard. And I do think low-key a part of it is because she knows that he has somewhat a level of fame, right? And he's a rapper. So I think that's why she's kind of going a little too hard to snatch him up. And even when they left the restaurant, right, she grabs Darian's hand. And you know that's a power move, right? It wasn't authentic to me. Like, she's coming off very strong. And even when Alexia's like, we're not going to be holding hands now, she's there smiling, giggling. She's getting off on this. She's like, oh, I'm taking your man. (laughs) He's into me, blah, blah, blah. When really the truth is the whole day he was... So... That's just really, she's really messy to me. And if Darian has a choice, I think he should be like, well, of course he has a choice, but I don't think Darian should see her again. But of course, you know, he may, he may see her again. But she's just, I I don't like the way she's moving. But at the end of the day, I guess Alexia should be grateful 
for this situation because she gets to see what's going on for herself right in front of her face not behind her back because even during her date she was talking about you know sometimes he says he's in the studio but i'm not really sure so you're implying that he has potentially been cheating on you and by the way he talks about kai the way he's moving with kai i mean he most likely is so this is not someone that you need especially like i said you've been with this person for 14 years and they still don't want to make a commitment to you move on like alexia please listen to your date listen to him because he's right what are you doing you need to focus on your, yourself and then she's like i do focus on myself what are you talking about and that's the sad thing because i think she's just so oblivious she's in a toxic situation but like i said last week because she's been with this guy since she was 17 18 this is all she knows so this kind of toxic interaction is normal to her right so when other people call it out and say you know what i don't think this is healthy she doesn't see it she thinks she's perfectly fine she thinks this is how relationships are supposed to go and you know and he just seems very controlling and same with her they're they're codependent you know and it's the hypocrisy for me when it comes to darian where you can do all this stuff but then she can't and she was even saying oh he doesn't like when i'm in a room with another guy and he's there like are you serious this is not this is not a healthy scenario for both parties right both parties are not getting doesn't seem to get what they're they're needing from this situation it, I, it's not healthy at all so all the couples they meet with dr nicole and she she got them all together low-key she got me together a little bit right with the whole it's important to have honesty in your relationship, right? You may not like what your partner is saying, or you may not have that feeling of safetyness in their truth, but it's still important for them to communicate it, right? Because that's where issues arrive in relationships when things go unsaid. And at least if you're upfront with this situation, there's the potential that you can deal with it. Or if if you guys are not meant to be, you can know up front and move on versus kind of keeping things to yourself, not saying how you feel, and you guys carry on being miserable, living this lie, right? So I do get it. It may not have been with Eric and Jessica. It may have not been what Jessica wanted to hear with him saying this is the best conversation I've ever had. That probably is very hurtful, but that's how he feels that's how he feels right the irony in this whole situation is that eric doesn't want to go on another date with this girl because he says he's not physically attracted to her oh my god guys are so shallow and it's this is the woman he went on a date with in my opinion is gorgeous yes maybe she's a bit heavier quote unquote not really in my eye but I guess maybe in comparison to Jessica but she's absolutely gorgeous and curvy and I don't know what he's talking about like oh she's not my type physically I mean everybody is allowed to have their type but if you had such an amazing conversation with this person the best per the best conversation you ever had in your life right are you gonna pass it up just because the person doesn't exactly you know they don't really look like your physical type and it's not like this person is unattractive or ugly either so i just don't i don't know if he said he didn't want another date to protect jessica's feelings because she knew he knew she was very hurt by it so he was like you know what i'm not gonna go forward with this but he didn't want to say that so he kind of low-key just threw out oh i'm not attracted to her like that was a cop-out if he did that, I mean, okay, but it's just a little weird to me. I mean, to just say you had the best conversation and then say you don't want to go for it because you don't find her attractive when the girl is attractive. That doesn't, I mean, okay, whatever. But Jessica was so happy. She was overjoyed when he said that. She was beaming. And, you know, she wants to go on another date with her dude. 
because you know he was an attractive guy they seemed to have chemistry and i think her boyfriend coming into the situation kind of threw her off a little bit so she didn't really get to connect with him her date so okay fine um darian darian is so annoying right because when dr nicole is you know telling them about themselves instead of him sitting there and taking it in right i believe dr nicole was saying how i think this has been an issue with all the couples right that they're trying to control their partner they're trying to control the situation by like being super vigilant and saying you can't do this and you can't do this i think um they were talking specifically about kai who i do believe is doing a little too much okay was holding darian's hand and alexia being like we're not gonna hold hands you know that whole scenario um dr nicole was saying you can't control your partner right like that's not going to help the situation you guys have to let go and really give into the process and focus on your own day and what you have going on and not focus on your partner right but the whole time dr nicole is saying this darian is looking over at alexia and see 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 are you listening are you listening are you getting it and it's like dude you were the same one on your day right you couldn't focus on your day because you were looking over at Alexia and what she had going on the whole entire time. You didn't even attempt to make conversation with your date, right? You all you could say was this is so uncomfortable. This is so uncomfortable. Yet you're here in this session and you're looking over to Alexia like she's the only one that has the issue. It's you too, buddy. Look in the mirror. And I'm just not here for this relationship because it does seem I know this word is overused, but I'm going to use it gaslighting. It does seem very gaslighty to me, right? Where it's just like, "Oh, you're the only one with the issue. You're the only one with the problem. Are you listening? Are you paying attention?" Yet he's not taking accountability for his own actions. He's putting everything on her. So that just seems very manipulative to me, and I don't like that at all. at all even when he was saying oh she's holding on to my hand what am i going to do like he's some helpless victim in the situation right at least own what you do if you wanted to hold your hold her hand hold her hand like every scene with this girl they're holding hands he has his arm around her does she have a gun to your head this guy have a gun to your head making you do these things no you're doing these things because you want to right so own it own it take accountability but he doesn't want that he's putting everything on to alexia right <sighs> alexia needs to get out of that situation but i'm glad you know by the end of the session she was like you know what darian he's having this connection with kai i need to focus on myself because i haven't made a connection with anybody else so i need to really give into the process which i think is true because from her two dates her aura is kind of standoffish you can tell she's not really opening up she's not really giving in to the process at all and by her doing that she's the one that's going to be missing out so i hope she does attempt to really open up more and hopefully she finds someone that she connects with so she can get a better idea of potentially what a healthy er interaction is right and maybe realize that Darian is not the one because he's not the one please 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 move on okay next J and LaRonda I love what Dr. Nicole said like you're being controlling and manipulative right I take back what I said about J and LaRonda I hate to do this at the end of the day Nobody is perfect, right? So I wish all the couples if they can work through their issues and it works for them, I hope they can move forward, right? In a health in a happy and healthy relationship. So I don't wish the demise of any relationship except maybe Alexia and Darian if I'm going to be honest, cuz he doesn't seem too open to the process of changing. 
But with Jay and LaRonda, I was really rooting for them. And now I'm really starting to see the cracks in their relationships. And I don't know if they should really be together. I hate to say this for LaRonda's sake because Jay is just so, so very insecure. Right, And it seems to me that LaRonda is coming off more as a mother figure versus a partner, right? You know, I look back to her ironing his pants. She's always like hugging him and petting him and soothing him. She always has to reassure him that everything's going to be fine. Don't worry, don't worry. And throughout this whole process, we get a lot of Jay projecting his trauma right and we get a lot of his narrative but I feel like we don't really hear a lot from LaRonda especially in this group settings we don't really hear a lot of about a lot of her experience it seems to always be focused on Jay right even when he's you know Dr. Nicole asks LaRonda, well, how is your day and everything like that? Jay is the one that's talking and saying, well, I don't think she likes that type of guy and da 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 da. And at first I'm like, is he joking? But no, this guy is serious. This guy is really low key, high key, very serious. And to me, that is very, very controlling. And it's a red flag. Because like I said before, it's not like one person's dating and the other is not. Both of y'all are dating different people, okay? You are part of the process as well. Why are you so focusing why are you so focused on what she has going on? And she said that Loranda said this whole thing is very draining. And I can imagine it's just too much. And you know, I brought up before I was wondering is Jay like this in other situations outside of the show? And LaRonda confirmed it, that he is, that he is very jealous. And long term, I just don't see this relationship working out, especially, I hate to say this, hate to say this but with the entertainer, right? He, he doesn't get steady income, right? Which can definitely be a problem for a lot of women. Uh, being in a relationship with someone who doesn't have that steady income coming in, right? But then on top of that, he's insecure about not, not having that steady income coming in, right? And he's already kind of emotionally immature. So I wonder how he takes rejection. I wonder how he's going to take not getting the job, right? Right? And is he going to take that disappointment and rejection and project that onto LaRonda, right? If he sees LaRonda with another guy, it could just be a co-worker, and he's not feeling too good about himself because he didn't book that deal. Is he then going to take out that frustration on LaRonda and then accuse her of um, cheating on him with another guy? And da-da-da-da, he probably already does all that stuff, and that's exhausting. That's exhausting to have someone always look at you like you're up to no good or you're doing wrong instead of just having that trust. <sighs> because I feel like LaRonda, then LaRonda doesn't get to be present in that relationship. Her whole purpose in that relationship is to lift him up because he's talking, even when he talks about LaRonda, he says, wow, she's done so much for me. She's changed my life. Da, 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 da. And on the surface, that sounds like um, an amazing thing to say. That's great. That's awesome. But now that I'm seeing more of the relationship, it does seem like the typical scenario of the woman lifting up the man, soothing his ego, uh, feeding his needs. But what about her? She sort of gets left behind and drained. <sighs> oh my gosh. Ugh. Ugh. This show is awkward, but low-key, I think it's really necessary because in situations like this, you can really see who you're dealing with. And I can understand why Dr. Nicole preaches honesty and truthfulness in this situation, right? So you, so everybody can really know what their partner is feeling. So there is no surprises. So they can just lay 
everything on the table and deal with it. Because the last thing you want is to get married with this person, have kids with this person, right? And then now you have to face all these things. So it's better to know before, right? So at the end of the day, the show is not necessarily about saving mar- uh, saving relationships or necessarily putting a ring on it. It's about facing the reality of the relationship, right? And that may mean that they have to break apart. But you know what? That is a good thing because it opens a door for you to find somebody else that may be a better match for you. And even more important to that than that, it helps you grow as a person, which is the most important thing versus having a man or having a woman or this or that. The most important thing is the relationship with yourself. So that's all, guys. You know, I'm really enjoying this season so far. So see ya.